Welcome, Terry Lynn here, Traveling Artista. A little while back, I had a subscriber to my YouTube channel ask me about basic pastel supplies. Now, do keep in mind this is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the good items to have on hand and to build up over time as you're working with pastels. Now, the first thing you need, of course, is a variety of pastel sticks. You want to get the paper off these immediately. I know they seem so precious, but you got to get that paper off and then break them down into half inch to maybe one inch sizes. So they're very easy to use. Then what I do is I get a small tray with a neutral cloth over it. This is in the lower right hand corner. And I pull out the colors that I've decided for that particular painting. And that way I am not totally distracted by the huge amounts of pastels that are in my full palette. And it helps you stay focused and maintain a color scheme in that painting that's gonna work together very well. You can always pick up some as you're going along, but that's a great little thing to have on hand. Other items you definitely need are some sort of backing board. I've painted my drawing board black here so that the color of the board does not distract from the painting and I can focus on the colors. My easel is very light and transportable for plein air. And underneath my board, I always have this V trow to catch pastel dust as it falls as I'm working. Then off to the side, I have a small dish where I can tap that trow dust down into this dish with little pieces of pastel. And then later on, I can grind these back together and reconstitute them into new colors and new pastel sticks. I have that on my blog if you want to check it out. Now, papers. There are many types of paper. For years, all I used was the Canson Mitant paper. Now, this has two sides. It's a mechanical side and a very more natural side. But I have now discovered sanded paper, which is so much better with pastels. And what I do at this point is I turn that over to that back natural side of the Mitant paper, and then I tape it down around the edges and put pumice gel on it and wait for it to dry. The pumice gel gives you a nice thin layer of sanded paper so you can use it for sketching or planning. Again, there are many, many different types of sanded papers. You have Sennelier, Pastel Mart, UART, Han Mueller. There's so many types out there. Check them out. And some places like Dakota.com, I believe it is, you can get sample packs and you can try them out. These are great, they're very consistent, very high quality, and you might pay a little bit more for them, but they are definitely worth having on hand. Do check out what other pastelists use and talk to them. A lot of these great pastelists are willing to answer your comments and questions on Facebook. Another type of surface you can use is a pastel board. Now, they come in many different types, and you can go to dakotapastels.com to try one of their sampler packages, or you can create your own board by using some sort of acid-free board or even foam cord and putting that pumice gel on it for yourself. It's not as consistent a surface, but it works really well. Then you don't have to worry about a backing board when you go to frame the piece. A lot of pastelists also want to protect their skin. Pastel can be an irritant. It is not chemically toxic, really, but you don't want to get it too much into your skin. And it's really funny to go to the bank and you've got really dirty fingernails. I'm like, no, no, really, I'm an artist. I'm not dirty. Anyway, you can use gloves. You can use gloves in a bottle, which is really popular with artists. But for me, my skin's a little sensitive for that. So my favorite hand protectant is this clear shield that's available from shop.com. Just shop.com. And it is non-toxic, biodegradable barrier. It's three silicones. It's breathable, and it's a moisturizer. You put it on. You let it dry. It's great. Rags. I have a clean rag bag and I have a dirty rag bag. When I'm done with the dirty rags, I throw them in with my jeans or other items like that and just go through the wash. Tapes are a lot, many different types of tape. You have a masking tape from the right on the going in. You have the blue and the green painter's tapes. Those are good for holding things up, but you don't want them visible when you're working on your painting. That color will affect how you're approaching the colors in your painting. 
A black artist tape, which is acid free, is great to use. You can use it as you're working on the painting and also in framing. And then you have a white artist tape for many uses as well. On hand, I always have my color wheel, color charts, and plans for what I'm doing with the color scheme of a particular painting. In the lower right is a mat that I use to predetermine my sketches, because sometimes they come out really great and you want to hold on to those and maybe frame them. And in the lower left here, I have a mask tool that I cut out myself to cover up certain areas of the color wheel so I can focus on the colors I want. I also have around inspirational notes and notes that I've made for myself, things I need to focus on, things that I need to remind myself as I'm going along and not take myself too seriously and have fun with this whole process. Always okay, so I want to have a good collection of photos, maybe a black and white photo to work from, different sketches where you're planning out your color schemes to see what works best. It also helps with your composition and your tonal values. Do remember to take a picture of your work and to turn it to black and white to see your tones are working well. Another item I have is my photo reference stack. I mean, I have tons of photos. And then to the left here, I've cut swatches out of magazines. So if I'm having trouble with a color that's not working and I want to put it in there without actually putting the pastel on the work, I can use these little snippets of color and hold it up and see which ones work best before committing myself to adding color into a painting. The little index cards also help me isolate a color so that it distracts all the other colors around it and you can focus just on that one little area of color. I have another little tray where I have my sketching tools. Now my primary sketching tool is my vine charcoal and I also have charcoal pencils. You can see here I have my paper sticks for blending or lifting color. I have just a stick I found outside to scratch in some texture. And then I have a couple of erasers. I have my kneaded eraser to the left and then that pen eraser. And that is called a General's Factis, F-A-C-T-I-S eraser. And it's refillable. It has little cartridges you can put in there and get little tiny areas erased out. Then, of course, you always have your fixatives. Now, I use fixative as absolutely little as possible. I like that pure pastel. If you get it too wet from a fixative, then it will flatten the pastel flakes and you will lose that luminosity. So you want to use these very, very sparingly. The most expensive on the left, my Lasco, I use very fine mist at the very end of paintings if I need it. The Spectrafix is casein-based and is non-toxic and then you have other more basic fixative that work pretty well. Again my suggestion is to use fixative as little as possible. Other pastel supplies, you have your pan pastels on the left here which are just flat and they come with a sponge that you can apply large areas of color and I use them often as an underpainting although you can use them all the way through to a finished painting. And then you have some pastel pencils which tend to be harder but are good for signing your name and other little details. I also have backup pastels. This used to be my old carrying case for pastels and I use it now for like when I'm running out of a color in my main palette that I will pull out of this. And I love these other wooden boxes like in behind that I use to hold special pastels that I might need. Now as I'm going in to my working collection here, I have this larger collection. I also have a smaller one for plein air painting. Now, as we're looking at pastel brands, there are so many different types of pastel brands. You have your hard pastels, like New Pastels, Caran d'Ache. There's a bunch of those. You have mediums, like your Rembrandt and your Whole Beans. Then you have your super soft pastels, like Schmincke, The Great American, Blue Earth, Sennelier, you know, Terry Ludwig. Diane Thompson. I mean, there are so many out there and they're so wonderful. And those soft pastels are like butter when you put them on your painting. It is absolutely wonderful. You must try some of these. Another important aspect of working with pastels is that you want to work 
if you're layering from a hard pastel first through the medium pastels and then finish with your nicely soft pastels so they sit on top like frosting on that painting. Well, that's a basic of some of my pastel supplies. It's not exhaustive by any means. There's plenty more you can do and plenty more that's possible. And everyone has their own personal style and it's good to experiment to see what will be best for you. If you have any questions, do email me or contact me here. Meanwhile, subscribe and check out my other videos that are linked in here. I have some on color theory, drawing, pastels, how to approach an old pastel painting and try to make it new, and I am constantly expanding my channel. So enjoy painting, keep in touch, and stay dusty, my pastel friends.